Believe it or not, guys. I have some free time right now. So let's uh, let's let's deal with the water pump and thermostat problem. For those who don't know, the water pump on this thing has been leaking, and there was also some issue with the thermostat. Personally, though, I think it doesn't even have one. I believe it was removed at some point. There was a, there was this freak storm yesterday. You know, I usually sleep under the roof there. And uh, you could feel that wind plus the rain pounding against the roof. Addition to the thunder, of course. The result, though, we don't have power right now. So the civilized folks are just uh, escaping to the city because there's no power here. Bunch of pussies. Luckily though, I'm not civilized. Also the power company said that um, it's gonna take like 10 hours to fix the situation. I'm pretty sure I'm unable to stand still for 10 hours. Might like commit suicide or something, I don't know. I was kind of, I was kind of building the plasma cutting table. I'm not sure if that video is out by now, but uh, gonna have to put this on hold until I get my spark back. But in the meantime, Let's go start working on the Joseph. That thing is losing about maybe like two liters per month. Even at that rate, it's losing more coolant than it's losing fuel. So let's uh, bark that thing back to the disaster area and try to fix that water pump and thermostat. Oh, there is one more issue with this thing I noticed. You guys remember when I put that belt on the alternator, right? Well, apparently that alternator is you no know, good. Or it's the wrong model or something. Because that alternator charges the battery at minimal like 16 or 18 something volts. This thing's rated maximum for... Well, it's a 12 volt battery, but... I think you're supposed to charge it with maximum maybe 13 point something. Basically with this short ride, it's already hissing at me. So the battery will eventually overheat and I don't know, explode or something. So I need to figure that bit out as well. A hissing battery is not very good. Every time I turn with this thing, I need to hide the evidence. Man, I need some rock here. Definitely need some rock here. Actually, I wanted to do the rock chop this year, but I just don't have not enough money and not enough time. I wanted to actually cover this whole area in rock, including this driveway. Got to somehow manage, I guess.
really wish I had a grease bit right now. That would be amazing. This is no good. I need to get it higher. Not good. I mean, the ram is dry, luckily, so I'm guessing it's not a seal. Yeah, it's coming from up here. I'm just gonna pretend I did not see that. safety level beyond light speed. I, I thought it's gonna be more dramatic than that, sorry guys. My bad. Check the gasket on the hydraulic pump guys. What the hell? Is that cardboard? Or paper? Or maybe it's a uh, gasket material? What a lazy dude. Anyway, our issue is there, I suppose. But I'm not really 100% sure if it comes from that plate or between the two housings. To be honest, I don't think there's anything there. So if it comes from that gap there, then it's possible that maybe the pump is cracked or something. I won't know until I remove the pump though. I'm gonna fire it up quickly, see if... See if I can see anything.
we have confirmed guys it only starts to leak once I turn off the engine I could avoid doing this fix if I just kept the engine running forever but I need like a fuel fuel tanker for that okay I'm not sure if you guys can see but maybe this is better yep there's the leak guys so basically I have to completely take this thing off in order to put the, uh, either a new either a new gasket there or just redo it with silicon I'm, I'm just guessing that uh, they did not have gaskets for this uh, tractor and this engine it only has like 1800 hours on it it hasn't really seen much action I mean 1800 hours that's that's like brand new almost but everything on it everything is just silicon together even the even the block or the head I mean sorry everything is just silicon together been quite a while since I since I last worked on this thing I did need it for a couple of odd jobs it's possible that you even know what I'm talking about here's a little hint shut up here's a little hint why is this bent by the way while I was doing those odd jobs I did notice something so the leak the water bump leak I don't think it's coming from the gasket area Rather, it was coming in between somewhere. But I can't see anything from here, and this is the only access area I have. So it's possible that maybe the bump is cracked, or there is some type of seal in between that area. I'm not really sure. Uh, I need to take it off anyway, so let's do that. This is so similar. This is like uh, when you're drying the bee, uh, when your foreskin is like in the middle somewhere. Kind of all over the place. I don't know, man. Okay, that's pretty good. That's quite a lot of Yeah, don't mind me guys and it's just crying in Estonian. That's how that's how crying in Estonian sounds. completely loose man. It's about to fall off by itself yeah I'm not falling for that crap again when I'm gonna install it back I'm either gonna add some uh, thread locker or it's just gonna weld the bolts shut 
they just keep going off. And the last one is there, but I literally have no access. Hunk of steel in the way. It's right there behind that thing. I think I got it. Yep. Anyway, guys, it's gonna take at least two years to undo all those nuts. So, be right back. That's one. That's two. Three. Four. Okay, well, at least we have movement. That's great. Yeah, if that keeps happening, I'm gonna set this tractor on fire, man. No problem, I have spare. Seriously, how deep this thing is? I don't get it. It looks like it should come out by now. Just imagine what kind of nightmare it was gonna be to put the thing back. Is it moving? I can't tell. Maybe it's stuck on something, but it seems pretty loose. Well, maybe, maybe if I can get the proper hose off, then I can somehow wiggle it out of here. But right now, the shaft that goes inside the engine, I guess, it's just so long. I may have enough wiggle room if I get. The stupid hoses off. I've opened all the clamps, they're loose, but the hoses, they're just still stuck. Plus it's over this much, so the pipe ends somewhere here. Ridiculously long. Maybe if I can take this piece off, but uh, man, that, that, that thing is pretty much rust welded onto the machine by now. I don't think I will be able to do that. The book says that uh, in order to service that water bump, it is advised to remove the radiator. So this whole ordeal. 
I'm just trying to cheat here by not doing that because if I want to remove the radiator I also need to remove the oil cooler that's like two years of labor uh, trying to avoid Oh boy, thought it's gonna break. That means only two more bolts are holding it, but uh, one is on an iffy location and another one is completely stripped. The thing moves pretty well. Maybe I can avoid taking this off. You almost got it sitting out, almost, but but it's now stuck against the fan. It would be great if I could move the fan a bit. Stupid bolts in the way. Check it out. We got paint under the under the silicone, man. That's some straight ABS right there. No wonder it was leaking. <laughs> man, no wonder they want me to remove the radiator. This is just hopeless. But I will hack this somehow. Man, this freaking... This freaking bolt, man. Found a new home. Piss off. Are you kidding me right now? Progress. Not sure if good or bad, but some progress. Yeah. Oh. oh! Yes! What a success, man! Quite the water pump, bro. Thing looks like a turbo. Wow. I don't know, guys. You tell me. Is that normal practice? Three paint under the gasket.
first casket I've ever made. Fancy that. Definitely more than this. Sixteen. So we need eight. Okay, before I finalize the cut, I need to make the second uh, cut first, actually, the inner line. bad fit slightly over size but I guess that's fine I am kind of worried that I'm gonna mess up the holes though hmm. almost you know guys I, I wonder what that what that little hole is if you recall I said that I don't think it's leaking from uh, this seal rather it was coming from in the middle somewhere so what oh crap so super Steve yeah, I'm gonna call him a Super Steve from now on. Super Steve though, that's a bee hole or a weep hole. If the, if the inner seals are shut, it will leak out of that hole. This just kind of went sideways. That means uh, this ain't no easy fix. And I have to disassemble the entire water bump. Okay, disassemble it should be somewhat easy. Probably not gonna pose a challenge, but where I'm gonna get the parts for it. Also, Steve mentioned that if the seals are worn, then most likely the bearing is as well. Or bearings, I don't know, maybe there's several of them in there. So, yeah. It feels tight. Yeah, it feels pretty tight. But maybe that doesn't mean anything. Water bump, guys. That's what we need. Water bump. Um, removing the water bump. Hey, I already did that. Remove the radiator. <laughs> I cheated. Get over it. Mm. Okay, so I need this part. Water pump disassembly. Direct translation from Russian man. I'm not sure if it's accurate, but uh, I guess we can 
go off with this information. So you unscrew some bolts somewhere. Five bolts. One, two, three, four, five. You know, I remember that uh, this piece doesn't really want to come off. Maybe, maybe it has been super glued or something. Oh boy, this is really stuck, man. It's been at it for a while now. Break my hammer soon. It's really stuck in here. In the book uh, it just says undo the five bolts and then just remove the segment. Obviously these two have like oxidized it together or something. I don't really want to use this too much because it's going to mess up the aluminium definitely. Hmm. Man, this seems like the only option. I managed to get past the first bolt head. Just got to keep digging, I suppose. It's gonna take forever. Special hook type of deal. Already got three bolts done. And pull holes, nicely done. Put 
but uh, I know, still have the middle pieces and the rest of the plate. Already like three hours now. Oh boy, you know, I've been at it for like freaking four hours now. Apparently, that uh, gray stuff is some type of uh, some type of Soviet era casket. Steve told me that uh, it is basically like glue, super glue. And apparently it's also filled with asbestos. Yeah, wish I knew that a bit earlier. What a freaking dumbass. Probably gonna mess up the surfaces, but man, I don't see any other way to get this crap off here. It's really, really stuck. Plus it's made out of aluminium, so I can't really go bonanza on it anyway. And this part is cast, very easy to break. What the crap man? How can a gasket be so strong? Freaking Soviets! Bunch of morons! Whoa! Correct me if I'm wrong, but I think that's... That's asbestos fibers right there. Freaking cancer gasket. This is literally a uh, cancer gasket. You know, I'm not 100% sure, but looks like asbestos. This uh, water pump is just gonna kill me. What? We're making some progress. We have a gap, finally. We're making some progress. Uh, I have a feeling it's not like a complete flat surface. Maybe there's some type of a... Some type of a bow there. But it's flat to a certain point, but then it kind of bows downwards. These will not do anymore, and I hit the thickest ones I have.
Holy moly. Holy moly. I'm gonna cry. What? The hell, man. What a nightmare that was. Good thing I didn't really use the... Stop falling down! Good thing I didn't use the jigsaw too long. Wouldn't want to cut this edge off. I only cut it a little bit. The water bump is missing a bunch of uh, flanges as well. The blade actually should reach this far, but uh, it would be great if I would get a uh, new flange as well, but uh, I'm not sure if it's doable. Uh, I'm gonna try though. Before I continue the disassembly part, I'll make sure I remove the, all the asbestos from the work table. Quite a bit of that crap here. So I think I'm gonna get cancer by the end of this video. Looks like we did not cause too much damage. I only kind of only messed up the corners a bit. This surface is completely fine. Let's continue. Next up, um, gotta remove this nut. Hear that? It's like it's like minor blade in the bearings. If the seals go bad, then the water will ultimately destroy the bearings. And if you don't do anything about it, um, catastrophic failure will eventually occur. Like, um, for example, the water pump seizing up, no more water flowing through the engine, and then your engine gonna resigns. The keyway guys, do not forget about that bit. Okay, so next bit uh, should be to press the shaft out of the bearings from this side. Wow, my homemade press is actually useful for something other than making apple juice. through the first bearing there is another one I don't know somewhere there set up my setup maybe this will work Okay, I think we got it. Something, uh, something went south, guys. Check those grooves out. While pressing it, something was grinding against the shaft. 
it did not have this before yeah. it started from the very bottom maybe it did have a stopper ring here but the book uh, it did not say anything about it yeah remove the keyway i did that press the shaft out of the bearings towards the propeller so that way there's there's no stopper ring man And even if there were something here, how would I, how would I even remove it? There is some washer in there which is moving. Yeah, I'm guessing this is the seal that failed. But um, I wanna, what the hell messed up my shaft? seems to be moving slightly so I'm I'm curious what what the crap messed up my shaft it has to be something in there the book mentions nothing about it uh, clearly something at the start of the second bearing started grooving into the shaft and all the way to the end maybe a bit of JB weld would do the trick but I don't know, maybe I need a new shaft. Such a bummer, man. I'm gonna cry till morning. <coughs> stupid pushing, man. Stop teaching in there. Looky, looky, there is a stopper ring in there. But um, that's for the bearing, that's not for the shaft. This um, steel bushing though, it has some damage. As you can see, it's grooved inside as well. Pretty badly even. As of right now, I still have no idea what caused the damage. I don't have the right tool for it. I mean, what would be the proper tool for that type of stopper ring? It doesn't have those tiny holes. Maybe some pliers. Okay, let's keep trying, I guess. Stupid ass design. It looks like another seal or bushing in there. That bearing also should come out this way. the same on this one maybe it's fine I don't know gonna get new bearings anyway but not sure <sighs> some type of seal in there Need to get that out as well. The book says that I need to press it out. I think I have like 10 tons on it right now. But it should come. Oh man, it clearly says press out the gaff. Item number three. So item number three, that thing there, but the thing will not come. 
It would make total sense to press this entire unit out. There's a nice steel blade here and just kind of press it out that way. And there's no stopper ring or anything in the way. Actually, I just need I need to get that seal out. Maybe, maybe I can just yank it out of there somehow. That was easy. Should have done that from the get-go. Okay, that takes care of that bit. Think I'm good, I don't need to press that piece out. I just need to fit a new seal there. And this was the culprit seal, yeah, because it was directly at the peep hole, or I mean the B hole. Definitely need a new seal. That one as well. Gonna get new bearings. I'm gonna dry to get a new propeller and um, a new shaft, if I can. Yeah, I still don't understand what the crap happened here. I'm not sure what messed up the shaft. I couldn't find anything that has scratch marks on it. It pretty much started scratching as the thing started moving through the bearing. This was the, this was the setup inside the hub. So what do you think guys, what could cause the scratching? My guess is that uh, there were some debris inside here and as I was pushing the shaft downwards some debris got gaffed in the bearings that messed up the shaft. Maybe there was some shrap metal in there. I'm gonna try to get a new shaft. As for the parts though, might take a while. Best case scenario, I can just order it online. Worst case scenario, gonna migrate to Russia, man. Steal some bulldozer parts and then spy myself back to Estonia. Kinda sketchy, but um, do what you gotta do, I guess. In the meantime, though, let's um, check the thermostat. Maybe it has been removed. Let's see what we can find. This bolt has seen some better days. In the book it says that um, I need to remove the hood in order to remove the thermostat. Maybe I can hack this as well. The last hack was pretty successful. Oh, come on, stupid fuel line in the way.
okay well we can see some failure man what the hell i never thought i would see death so close with my own eyes actually i just yesterday checked you can still order that crap i don't get it it's commercially available so i could just hop on the uh, online store and order that cancer the eu has not blocked it off so maybe it's not that bad i don't know but anyway it looks like we have something going on there looks like something has broken Man, Steve was right. Getting this crap off is a nightmare. It's, it's like a glue. It's not a gasket anymore. It's a glue gasket. I think I have to draw this uh, vacuum cleaner out of the airlock. Okay, so apparently there are two thermostats in here. The one of them is clearly broken, or the flange where the thermostat is sitting is broken, and another one is just open. It should not be open like that. So I need to replace both of them out, and Steve told me I should be able to install like a Volkswagen Golf 2. Golf Duo thermostat in this thing. But I'm not really sure how I'm supposed to remove them. Um, the book is not much of help in this section. In the book it says remove the thermostat. Much help that. I wonder why it says I need to remove the hood in order to get the thermostat out. Slowly moving. Thing has probably never been changed. Ow! Freaking finger, man. Ow! Okay, it's still moving, so I guess it's fine. Okay, anyway guys, um, I'm just gonna boss this project for a while. Gonna pick it up when I find some parts. <laughs> if you have not seen any videos from me lately and somehow you get your hands on this content, then, uh, then my smuggling attempt most likely ended up a failure. And I'm probably in Gulag, somewhere in Siberia. Oh boy, it's literally been a couple of months now, maybe even more, I, I, I have no idea. But I finally, I think, got all the parts that I need, almost. First of all, this um, propeller thing, I was unable to get it. The company that uh, deals with parts for this dozer 
they did have i think like two maybe one at stock but they simply just refused to sell it to me well i was talking to the ceo of that company and he said that um can't get this part right now so i guess this is going back in there maybe it's fine we still have like two propellers and uh, some pieces of others and before i fully assemble the thing i probably will look at a couple of more spots where i could get one but right now this is going back in there so getting this thing was also kind of a problem but i did manage to get one so looks a bit thicker with a fresh spring in it i mean the old spring um the old spring um yeah that so this actually is not shipped in a single unit one two three four four parts and they usually don't assemble it they just sell the four parts and you assemble the thing yourself but luckily the guy did assemble it for me which is really great so this was probably the most important thing because this is what was leaking and that's why the bearings bearings also went bad so i did get that and a couple of these things now i can't remember i i could only find one like where there are two of them i just can't remember now, as for the shaft I did manage to get a brand new shaft. This was like $10, man, it was dirt cheap. And um, yeah, a couple of new bearings and also a new back seal or whatever you call this thing in English. This is the new one. This is the old one with a hole in it somewhere. This was also leaking. By the way, this thing had a three week shipping period and a couple of new thermostats they should fit it but i'm not really sure 81 degrees which is apparently perfect for joseph and uh, that's about it guys now we gotta assemble the thing but it's been like several months i can't remember squat i mean how hard can it be i just got to watch my video backwards right well at least i should have like detailed instructions here Gotta follow everything to the letter. Seriously. Got to make sure the drain hole is not clogged. Seems pretty open to me. This way, I think. Now before I install the bearing in there, gotta install this washer, but check it out. I think I found the culprit, which uh, messed off my shaft. So the washer goes there, right in front of that seal. Then goes the bearing and the shaft should, uh, this way, this way up. Drew that bearing and uh, washer. It does not go on here. Kind of like should fit, but I can even see that the edge of the washer is mangled. So I'm pretty sure this washer caused these groove marks into the shaft. But um, how could I avoid this? I could do nothing. It was just hidden under that bearing there. I'm not sure what the tolerance needs to be like how tightly it needs to go on the shaft. I'm gonna try to get a new washer on this. Slightly bigger, slightly bigger. The thickness looks about the same. So 
0.4 millimeters thicker. Not sure if that's gonna be a problem. I think, uh, I think we should do. Okay, in goes the washer. Uh, actually, whoops. So I need to install it on the shaft instead. And then install one of the bearings on the shaft until it stops against the washer. And one interesting note here is that the old bearings, they did not have a sleeve or seal to cover the bearing balls. My guess is that uh, these things were oiled by the engine oil somehow. There are these two boards here. Maybe, maybe the engine oil kind of goes through here somehow. And Steve kind of told me to just pack the thing with grease and you're good to go. But there is no separate like oil feed line to this thing. This end of the bump, it goes into the engine bay. And I'm assuming uh, it's just kind of splash fed. And the book also says to lubricate with engine oil. Now I can't really see what's going on inside there. But I think you guys can. So, yeah, I think it's a splash. Splash the shine somehow, not really sure. Okay, after reviewing the footage, I'm just gonna back the thing with grease. I don't think any oil will get in there very well. Oh, but, okay. Guess it's already backed. Time well spent. What? Give me my glove back! What is this crap? Fancy that, already got a tiny little mark there. Always mess something up. That's great. So, Buddha Technol... Buddha Technology... Technology... Tech... Technological conceal mandrel on the spindle end of the roller. What? Don't even know what that word means. Thinking I slept too much while being in school. Basically, I think I just need to cover the splines up so they would not mess up that seal there. Remove the cone next. What freaking cone, man? I have not installed any cone on the thing. Also, during the disassembly, it did not mention any cone. I'm guessing it's the translator. It's kind of all over the place. No, I don't think the bearing is all the way in there. Almost perfect. Mm. I think I need some type of a special snap ring tool for this type. Wonder if I can drill those tiny holes there. I do have a cobalt drill bit, maybe this can manage. Uh, I think snap rings usually are quite strong. They should be made out of spring steel. Man, it did... Bro, what? It just dulled my... Die thing. 
did not leave any mark on there, just a scratch. I don't think this is happening. What a bummer, man. I think I need a carbide rivet. Cobalt can't master it. What a tough tomato. You know, maybe a masonry bit will do. Never mind. I don't think one and a half millimeter masonry bit even exists. What would be the point of that even? Fancy that. High speed steel guys. I gave the thing a really um, aggressive edge on the bench grinder. Seems to have done the job. Success. You mean? Unspunts, cutting edge. Perfecto, bro. Next up, the um, spacer sleeve thing. Okay, next up is the second pairing. Put the uh, I remember that the bearing just kind of popped out very easily. So I'm just gonna install some... Kratziko tunne, no kostat selles on juba poes tühina. Mis asja, et no ei tule mitte midagi välja. Nalja teete või? No nüüd, nüüd otsustas kulla. No okei, väga. I guess it just kind of has to go until it hits that um, spacer sleeve there. Yeah, I don't think that's about it. Do not win. Will we snuggle rock and bed as well? I'm not sure about the torque figure, it does not say in the book. Just gonna leave it there. Okay, that should take care of this side. At least I think so. Probably forgot something, but whatever. Okay, next up comes this thing. Uh, for me, this is already pre assembled, but um, like I said, it consists of four parts. The spring, the center thing, and the two side seals. The book luckily does detailly explain how to assemble the thing. But we can skip that and just put the thing on there. Next up comes this type of... Um, I wouldn't know even what to properly call this thing. Sort of a mystery though, why did they send me two? When I disassembled it, there was only one in there. So that thing goes right there. Uh, clearly there is not enough room for two, right? That would be too much. And the book also does not mention two of them. Only... Yeah, the book says it's a washer and there's only one of them. By the way, I think you can reuse this. They seem to me 
They seem to be made out of graphite. I don't think these will go bad. At least this looks pretty good. Looks about the same. Copper ring. Then comes that thing. And finally, a new impeller. Oh, by the way, I somehow managed to get a new impeller. That's actually a pretty interesting story. It's kind of weird how it happened even. The company that um, supplied me this uh, seal, they told me the impeller is kind of rare and they only have one or two available and they were not willing to sell me theirs. So I got up Steve. He was literally like, um, give me five minutes. May I may have one and he did. So Steve sent me this one. This is the old one. And somehow I also got a brand new one. I was just driving past this Russian tractor shop. It kind of occurred to me, maybe they have one. Wouldn't hurt to look. And yeah, that's how I ended up with you. Steve also mentioned that um, the Girovets uses the same impeller. So I guess I got some spare parts for that thing then. Fantastico. Anyway, next up. This thing. I remember I had some issues removing this. So there is a bleed hole down here which has to align up with that hole. You can't really install it incorrectly, it's pretty straightforward. You write the casket as well. Dutch the bullet there, right there. Got to add silicon. Whoops. No, it's not perfect. The thing is grinding against the hub ever so slightly. Full circle, only like one side, which is weird. Yeah, it's just that one spot. Third time's the charm, hopefully. Basically, it's just kind of slightly feathering. Yeah, on this spot. I think that's fine. You know what, I think this thing is ready. There is still that casket to install, but I'm gonna install it later on the machine. Got the thing right here though. Oh yeah, you wanna know something cool? So I started this project uh, way back when. I think it was September. Yeah. Winter Wonderland. No idea. I think this is gonna be a lot of fun. Maybe I should remove the radiator.
paika ei lähe, see paika pressitud. Pekki küll räis. Järgmine kord võtame radika maha mie pikki, see on täiesti lootus etu. Sasi mul takistab, ma ei näe takistust. Kuud vastu käibud. Siin ei ole mitte mingit takistust. Man, this thing is totally stuck. I can't move it up, down, anywhere. Basically, I can't install the thing because it's too low right now. I can't pull it up anymore because it's freaking stuck. I've uh, been at it for like two hours now. I think I got the thing partial in. Which is like... Something, I don't know. Ta peab ikka minema veel oma jagu. No it's so close, but it just won't go on. I mean, I don't, I don't see any, anything in the way. It should just go on, but I can't apply any force that way. We got this thing in the way. You know, I think it's just the hoses. They're just so, it's so hard to push anything in them. So I think I'm just gonna leave it here for now. Let's let's remove the radiator. I don't see any other way. Never mind. Somehow I got the thing on there. I don't know how. It just sort of happened. You know, weird. Weird stuff is the best stuff. Stupid cancer crap, man! Get lost. By the way, I had to take the bump off again. So two issues kind of occurred while I was putting the thing back. I reviewed some footage from uh, yesterday and I realized I forgot to install a spring washer that went directly against the impeller plate. So I figured uh, I should dismantle it again, which I did and installed that washer as well. Now, if I did not do that, then I figured uh, it might like go south on me one day, because if that impeller not decided to just kind of unscrew itself, then, um, well, you can just imagine what could happen. I don't need to explain that. There was this other issue as well, which forced me to take it off. Check out one of the locking nuts. It just kind of decided to do that from now on. What a bummer. Taking the bump off though was a lot smoother this time. So I undid the radiator a bit, unhooked these two shock absorbers, I guess, on both sides. And I undid the anchor nuts slightly. So I got about maybe five centimeters of extra clearance, which is l like a lot. But basically I got the thing off in like five minutes compared to a couple of hours. Not quite sure how I'm gonna get that thing out though. Might be a problem. It's pretty loose there, maybe it just kind of bobs out. Or maybe it kind of just bobs in. It doesn't want to bob anywhere. 
Where's my angle grinder, man? Stupid snowstorm. Oh great, I can still see that one. As of right now, I have done squat on it. Hopefully we'll get there some day. Okay, kind of stuck here right now. And the weather is not helping. Come on, baby. Don't be a dude. Just come out. I think I got it. Hallelujah! I'm not sure if I can recover this one, but I'm gonna try. Man, I think this nut is busted as well. Maybe this one. Should do. Even after all these years, it still smells like cancer. Spoon. Stop hiding from me. Basically, this stuff is like JB Weld. Once it hardens, it is the strongest sustenance in the universe. Almost. So I'm not really sure about the mix ratio, but as usually, I just put a bit of this and a bit of that. Seems to work just fine. Basically guys, if uh, no hiccups occurs, then uh, be right back. Well, that takes care of that ordeal. Holding the thing back was still sort of a nightmare. Well, getting the thing off, it's a lot easier if I just tilt the radiator forward a bit. But getting it back on, it's that's the hard part. Mostly just trying to align all the hoses and the bolt holes together. That's just a complete nightmare. And then trying to put the nuts back on. Just kind of balancing a knot between your two fingers. Uh, doing, uh, doing that thing for a bit. Yeah, don't want to do that anymore. 
thinking next time I'm just gonna remove the radiator complex all in all. So overall it's pretty simple to remove it but there's this one reason why I did not want to do it. And that's because of this thing here. You know I think uh, I might be able to get it off but will I be able to put it back on later? That's that's a question mark. It's already missing a bolt there and this one here is just completely stripped. Most likely need to cut it off or something. This is the only bolt that came out and uh, that's probably rotten in there as well. So hopefully I don't have to revisit that water pump ever again. But if I do then um, the radiator is coming off. What's that? You know, I don't think this will stay here. I think they are kind of small. And the old uh, thermostat, it had a um, metal sleeve. I guess it was installed because that was also gonna fall out. Hmm. Winter Wonderland, man. Okay, so I may have found something. I'm not sure if it fits though. I went to, uh, I think it was like four different tractor shops. None of them had the correct thermostat for this machine. So I ordered this from online. Uh, the size of it should be on the okay side. The only issue is that the temperature is 86 degrees, not 71 or... Oh, that one is 81, okay. So it's not not far off. So size-wise, it fits here, but it doesn't stay there. This one doesn't have a O-ring, by the way. Uh, this seems pretty stuck, but this thing... You know what, I'm just gonna KB weld this piece of crap into place. This is either pure genius or the stupidest thing ever. This is, this is Ant's Pants style. Okay, that thing will basically turn into concrete or something similar. It should be good enough to hold just the thermostats in the right full place. <sighs> if this doesn't work and they pop out, then I'm gonna um, probably make like a metal bushing and try to hammer that thing in here, just like it had before. Probably gonna need to wait like a day before 
doing anything, but I can back it up. I actually made uh, the coolant for Joseph like a couple of months ago now. So I decided to use uh, filter the rainwater and the mix ratio was I believe 50-50 so this thing should be good up to minus 36 degrees if you want to mix up the coolant yourself then uh, you've got to remember that uh, regular tap water is it's just too rough you need some type of uh, softener or something but I've heard the uh, rainwater also works been waiting for this moment since well since start of this video I guess and did they close the valve forgot to close the drain valve I mean how stupid can you get right I think that's it. Now this thing does not have an expansion tank. So I have to leave some room in the radiator there. It just kind of vents itself straight into the atmosphere. And actually I'm pretty sure I need to add more coolant later. Because there is a heater in the gap and I'm pretty sure if I start the engine that will uh, suck up some of the coolant up there. No man, mountains of it, it's not great. Guess it's a bit early to tell if it leaks or not. You know, I have not had that any fuel of this thing ever since I bought it. So although the engine takes 30 liters per hour, when operating, uh, I guess, under normal circumstances. Let's check it out. How much fuel do we have left here? So I did not even uh, fill it up last time. I think I put it somewhere here on this line. Or maybe it was slightly higher, somewhere here. So 
So we went from uh, here to there. Mm, I guess it's not that bad. LOL. Whatever, we should be good for another year at least. Got to feel the bony up as well. Now, although the bony engine, it's a four stroke, four stroke gasoline engine. I still add a bit of uh, two-stroke oil to the mix. It's a bit less than uh, what I usually use on the chainsaw, but still. Now I know a lot of people will strongly disagree with this, and there's another group of people who will strongly agree with this, and uh, then there's the dirt group who just don't give a crap. By the way, I'm, uh, I'm in the dirt group. Pretty cool how that snow, it's, um, it's getting stuck behind the film screen, yet I have <laughs> no fuel coming through it as well. It's kind of slowly being there. Hmm. Mine pekkin on my viitsi oodata seda jamanu. Kus see seal edasi? Pretty poor last to us today, so I'm totally sweet out there. Anyway, guys, because it's that time of the year again when we are at 3 pm. Yeah, this is 3 pm. Literally 3 pm right now. Although it feels like maybe 9 9 pm. Almost bedtime for ants pants. Welcome to Estonia, I guess. Stupid ass. Daylight saving time. I will hate it forever. You know, overall, this thing should be ready now. You can't think of anything else if I missed or just kind of forgot. Uh, I guess we'll find out if something blows up or not if we fire this thing up. I'm hoping to kind of wrap this video up tomorrow. It's just been ages. I think I started this video off like three months ago. It's not even funny anymore. And the snow, man, it just keeps coming and coming. I don't have a working snowblower right now. I'm trying to build one for my bobcat. But first, I want to finish this. I hate loose ends, so I got to wrap it up. Hopefully it will fire up tomorrow. Hopefully Joseph will not disappoint. And we can... I don't know, try like 20 meters and park the thing. See you tomorrow, man. Oh, by the way, um, before we fired up, there's actually two more issues with this thing that I need to address. I have mentioned those problems before in the past, but one of them uh, has to do with the fuel pump. And it has something to do with the priming pump, which has been removed. So this is not the original setup. This is uh, some type of quick hack that somebody did to it. Uh, the thing loses prime over time. And if you remember when I bought this machine, the engine oil level, it was just insanely high. So I do believe I know why the thing is losing prime now. It's just leaking into the crankshaft or crankcase from the fuel bump. 
Now, I'm not really sure if it's leaking from somewhere there or it's leaking from somewhere, somewhere from the drive gear, which is there. During the summertime, I did replace the oil. When I filled it up, I put too much oil in it. So the level should be somewhere on this spot. So we can clearly see that uh, it's slightly more. Now to kind of counter measure this problem, I do turn the fuel line into the off position. This will make sure there's no uh, fuel pressure from the fuel tank directly on the fuel pump. So that should make sure that the fuel does not leak into the crankcase while the machine is just sitting. But one thing's for sure, after about a week, maybe two, the thing will just lose prime and I can't do anything about it right now. Luckily though, I'm pretty good at priming this thing by now, so... <sighs> Another problem was with the bony motor. So during the summer time, something happened to it. It did not want to fire up anymore and... Um, well, my fault really, but I don't know if it's... I wanted to check the spark plugs, right? Uh, I noticed that this spark plug was loose. It was just kind of doing that in there. But, uh, I don't know, I, I guess I forgot to put the thing back. It was just kind of hanging here. And then I, see, I did something here, I don't know. And the thing's just picked off on one cylinder. So that was just uh, doing planks. There was no spark plug in that hole. And ever since that, it's, it has, well, it does work, it does uh, fire up, but it's making these weird sounds. I don't know if I broke something by firing it only on one cylinder. Technically, nothing should damage the motor if you have the spark plug out and it's just going at it onesies. But ever since that, uh, the thing has this weird... I guess it's like a misfire or type of sound. Maybe you guys will notice it once I fired up. So I need to fix that issue as well. But I definitely don't want to put any starter motor on it. Even if it's an option, I don't want to do it. I mean, how am I supposed to start this thing? This massive 16 liter diesel engine with a stupid starter, man. Man, I need at least 16 batteries. One for each liter. So a bony motor for this thing is a perfect combination. And um, I don't know, let's, let's fire it up. Let's see what's what. By the way, one more thing. The main engine coolant, it runs through the bony motor. So the bony motor actually heats up the coolant also. No starter will do that.
always the diesel engine fired up. That pony motor made so much noise, man. I couldn't even hear the big motor. What the crap. Super happy that it fired up though. I was pretty sure this is a lost cause today. Because all the levers, the clutch, brake, everything is just frozen on it. I was sure it's not gonna even bother. So sorry. You guys feel that? Kind of weird vibe right now. Swore I swore I sensed something. Is it? Like some type of wood magic. So weird. What the hell? Whatever, man. I don't have time for that stupid, stupid witchcraft. I got a bunch of chosen. We seem to be sitting at something 45 degrees right now. Let's power down and check the wood of the lock, just in case. Well, it feels warm to the Dutch, so I guess uh, the pump is pumping, which is a huge plus. Yep, felt some pressure in there, but not not a lot. 
That's still full. 30. I'm thinking I did not run it long enough. You know what? Let's uh, push some snow. I mean, <laughs> why not? Maybe we can get the temperature up this way. Bro, these two are just so magical together. They should make love and have a child. Wheels on one side, track on the other side. Best idea ever. Come on, you do. Scissor or something. I don't know how the tractor is made. Not expert. Yeah, I've been thinking where to park the thing actually. I used to keep the thing here, but uh, you guys told me that uh, parking it under a tree is not that great of an idea. So, birds and maybe the occasional dragons will grab on it and. Uh, well, Joseph over here is not able to climb trees. I'm pretty sure of that. So he can't act on impulse to serve some justice. But there isn't really much room here. I still want to put it here, but... What the crap is this, man? S stupid weed. Let's get rid of this stupid weed. Let's carefully dismantle said weed. And park the thing next to the tractor shed. Genius! Did I mention you guys I hate the winter? Why are all my batteries always dead? Continue, man. 
push the thing between the two trees, I guess. I don't know. Super mom is gonna be. Super mom is gonna flip. I'm sure. She doesn't like when I'm using the dozer to plow snow. But it's just so much fun. And this is the snow. All that mud will also go away. I see this is an absolute win. I don't know guys, the thing just suddenly died. It was just so sudden. Uh, poof! Dead! Two things I noticed so far. So when uh, running the engine over with the bony motor, luckily it does spin. But I'm not getting any oil pressure. That can also mean nothing right now because it will not start. I did something before it stalled though. I moved the accelerator lever and then it just died. I think there's something wrong with this thing. I don't think that should be like so. I think it's just it came out. When I'm turning the engine with the bony motor, I'm not getting any fuel. No fuel at all from the fuel pump. I'm not really sure where it was before. Honestly. But I don't recall this slack here. Yeah, uh, kind of weird. I think 
there's something broken in there. Barely moves. You know, I'm no expert, but I think it should move a bit more than that. Currently my theory is that this thing broke and immediately the fuel supply was cut to the engine. <laughs> At least I'm hoping that's the case because it can be something really bad if that's not the case. Something like, where's the scrap truck, man? That would suck. No, I can't really tell, maybe it's supposed to move in and out. Great wiring, man. Fantastic wiring job. Hey, Bob, I have an idea. But let's run them wires. Let's just run them around the freaking... Basically everything we can find that moves up and down. Just wrap them up like Christmas trees. There should be a genius award. Well, at least they move together now. Let's see what's behind door number two. Well, immediately I can't see anything broken. Some type of mechanism. Man, that's all the movement it does. That's not normal. That's nothing. should move like this. But that's all it does. With my hand the thing moves a lot more. With the lever though that's all it does. It just barely moves. But I don't see anything broken. Or anything loose. Just to kind of confirm that I have fuel. See? So I have fuel pressure from the fuel fuel tank. So that's not the issue. If I can't get anything from here, then uh, then uh, yeah, I don't know. I think there's something wrong in there. Not the expert.
Okay guys, so kind of a sucky situation right now. Total suck balls right here. So addition to the uh, fuel leaking into the crankcase issue, I now have a more deeper fuel bump issue. As you saw, the fuel kind of came out from the f first one, then it stopped, then it came from there somewhere, then there, but it never came from the four ports at the same time, which uh, it should. It was kind of going... Yeah, I think there's something wrong with the fuel pump and uh, the engine is just not getting any fuel. Even if I flip the compression on, I don't see any smoke from the stack. Usually that means there's no fuel in the combustion chamber. What is concerning though is that um, I'm not getting any oil pressure while I'm turning the main engine over with the bony motor. I recall that uh, this morning when I tried to start the thing up, I was I was getting maybe like three or somewhere in the four. So right now it's not going beyond one. Not sure what's up with that. I hope it's nothing serious. When I started pushing from that area, I worked maybe like three minutes. I looked at the oil pressure and it was 2.5, which is totally normal for a warm engine. Right now though, clearly we don't have any fuel at the high pressure pump. I think there is something wrong with the linkage. Uh, but I couldn't see anything broken or wrong, so it's a bit of a mystery currently. I think we have more important matters right now. Like for example, we should probably go help out Santa Claus. He's kind of stuck there. Do but I can't use this thing. Oh, okay. Guess he got out already. Dave. I was hoping to help. But anyway guys, I'm gonna wrap this video up now. Uh, and uh, I'm gonna try to fix it, but I don't know how. Maybe you have some ideas. First case scenario, the thing will sit here. Throughout the winter, because I don't need it right now. I'm gonna need it next year, springtime. So I was just planning to park the thing here and yeah, leave it here for the winter. Well, it almost made it. It's just shy, like <laughs> shy about 10 meters. You almost made it, bro. Kind of on a stupid location, though, blocking my driveway down here. Oh, well. Yeah, what the crap was that? I think we're fine now. Such a mystery. Stupid weed. Good thing I did not hit this. But no, honestly. I never liked the weed anyway. Yeah. I 
going to do a bit of cleaning here, but uh, I don't think I'm going to do it right now. It could definitely make this place look a bit better. That should open at 86, so um, I'm gonna let it sit there for a while. I wanna see if it reaches operating temperature. I know you can get the temperature up faster if I just drove around, but what if it starts again? I mean wherever. Don't want that. Thing just keeps going. There's no hiccups or anything. Zero. Still zero. Oh yeah, by the way, that was the alternator only. When I start this thing up, I can just disconnect the battery. The alternator will, will run all the electronics on the tractor. That's pretty cool, I guess. Okay, well, that was kind of weird. What do you think, guys? I think there was something wrong with the fuel system. Keep in mind, though, that uh, the thermostats, they should work. Right now, I was just kind of tired of waiting. The thing ran for about an hour, and it only reached 54 something. But when it died here, I checked the coolant temperature, and it was 90. So the thermostats work. That's not the issue. My theory why I was not getting any oil pressure 
Mm, well, I think the bony motor is just unable to build up oil pressure when the engine is up to temperature, so the oil is very watery. With the gold engine though, I got four. Just just as I did before. So I think the engine is fine. Not the problem with the engine. Rather something up with the fuel system. You know, it might be that thing that I added there might have fixed it. Personally though, I don't think that was the case, but it might. There are two levers here. One is for hand cranking and the other one is for foot pedal. And the one that I added that um, giant nut there, uh, that's the uh, foot pedal control. So if one doesn't work, the other will work. And that thing moved just fine. So I don't know. Totally confused. Totally lost. Where's my hat, man? What? Is that oil? Where did that come from? I did not have any oil here before, 100% sure. Another spot where I did not have any oil, right there. Where did those two spots come from? I mean, this... Weird. Well, you seem to have something dripping there. But that's not the water pump. Now that's water, man. That's water. I think. Yeah, that's definitely water. But anyway, guys, the goal of this video was uh, actually not this mystery, but rather that water pump there. And, uh, and that thing seems dry. You don't see anything. That thing seems totally dry. So at least that's fixed. But I got a feeling if I fix something, then something else immediately breaks. Not sure what's up with that. That's actually I should be accustomed to it by now. Everyday life for me. I mean, for example, see that Janmar there? Exactly same situation with that one. I did a complete overall for it and something broke on it. I'm not gonna spoil what. But you guys can discuss, I guess, evaluate the situation from this point. If I go any closer, you will figure it out. But anyway, uh, I think uh, this parking spot is slightly better. At least it's close to the Soviet tractor there. It's off, no? I would say they're like butt buddies, besties or something. Butt buddies. But I'm gonna wrap this video up before it gets too weird. So see you later guys. Bye bye.